Act Natural with John and Courtney is a lifestyle podcast exploring the entrepreneurial culture in a practical way. Tune in to hear these two millennials balance their six businesses, small town politics, nonprofit, and a new baby who refuses to sleep through the night. We are back at this podcast thing. Henry is asleep. We approximately have, what would you say? About 30 minutes. About 30 minutes. We've been so nervous because, I'll be honest with you guys, we've tried to record two podcasts now, and Henry has woken up right in the middle of it. And we don't want to seem rushed, but it is a pressurized thing to be able to get these podcasts out while he is sleeping. This is a time bomb. Welcome to Parenthood with John and Courtney at the Act Natural Show. Today, on this fourth episode, we're going to be talking about what, Courtney? We're going to be talking about our favorite things. Um, A big reason why we wanted to do this podcast was kind of like going to therapy with each other slash having meaningful conversations and intentional time. So that means we can talk about whatever we want. And today we're going to talk about our favorite things. I really enjoyed this podcast, like the therapy sessions that basically they have been to being able to like, create an analog for our life and hopefully like Henry can listen to these one day. And then also being able to practically in a structured way, like talk about business and talk about our nonprofit and why we feel that we exist in the world, like what problems we're supposed to solve. And it's been great. Like I've really enjoyed it. But I think getting to the more simpler of things. What's a few of your favorite things? Okay, so starting off easy and enjoyable, let's go favorite food. We've got a couple categories. Fast food, food that I make, and ideal dream food. You go first. Okay, so I'm going to put this in the context of the business that I want to come to Martin the most, okay? Okay. It's just going to be the way that I structure it. It does not have to be that way. This is the way that I think, okay? If there could be a bit, and, and let's like use if we did not have Martin Coffee House, right? So I'm not gonna think about competition. Sure. I'm just gonna think about what business I want the most of. Because today, we were in this predicament where we had had all the food in the past three days that Martin had to offer, and we wanted something new. So I would think Panera Bread. For fast food? Oh, fast food, I mean, it's fast food? I don't like fast food, to be honest. If I could rid myself of all fast food, I know that might not be super relatable, but I don't like fast food at okay. all. Every time I eat fast food, I feel, ter- I feel terrible about myself, but there is one fast food that always reigns king in my life. Taco John? Taco Bell. Oh, well, yeah. But we already have that, like Tulum's in Jackson. Is that considered fast food? No, that's considered a sit-down restaurant. Yeah, but they have a drive through Wouldn't that still... Is it functioning? It is functioning. Sometimes it's not functioning. It's kind of like the Patios, is that how you say it, in Indian yeah. City? Like, I love they, that place. They have a drive through but they keep on parking their like car in front of it so nobody can go order that. Man, that place is so good. I really like their... Um, Orchata. I like their guacamole. Better than anyone else's. Remember that orchata that we had? Oh, I can't talk about that. We've had... Well, that's Yeah, okay. I'll say it. We had some really bad orchata one really time. It was really bad. And it was it in was Martin, Tennessee. on a food truck. Okay. I'll say that. It was in Martin, Tennessee. I'm not going to say when it was. This could be years ago. Could have been. It was in a warm pickle jar <laughs> with rice at the bottom. It was discolored. But you know what? I was like... Heck yeah, let's go for this thing. I love horchata. I want an horchata latte at our shop. I don't know how to make it. It's going to be amazing. Coming soon. But then I was like, let's be bold. You know, we waited in line till the end of what we were waiting for just to get our food for the main event. And then boom, horchata, sour. Yeah, it wasn't good. Made my stomach hurt. Yeah, that kind of stuff can make you We're talking about things that we like, not dislike. Okay, so... If we're going, like, fast food, fast food... Zaxby's, right? Sure. That's the best that we have around this area. I'm loving some Zaxby's. I've been eating that a lot lately. Had some today. It was excellent. Um, What's your favorite dish that I make? Okay, well, every dish that you make is amazing, baby. That's not true. (laughs) I cannot make pork I especially like the sugar pork chops that were caramelized in brown sugar. I don't... That was great. It was, it was dry. I mean, okay. Curious. You in you're being, you know, no, sarcastic I about liking the sugar part. That was the best part about it. Just straight sugar. It was terrible. Um, I I really like um I mean I love rice like so much. And so when you like saute onions, have some rice, 
Brussels sprouts um, and have some lemon and, and, and salmon. I mean, I'm, I mean, I love that. Yeah. And then asparagus. I like you do asparagus really well, too. I like the asparagus as well. So I like, I like it doesn't salmon, take a lot to it. Salmon, lemon, asparagus, crab pepper, sauteed onions, and, and uh, rice. Yeah, and that's one of my favorite meals that you make. I mean, that's a good dish. It's super great. I like that, too. I also why don't like... we do this more? Like, why don't we cook more? <laughs> You know. Okay, cooking in our kitchen is a little bit of a fiasco. It's hard. Like, we've given so much, and so our kitchen is very small. I don't know and... if us giving so much has... In... Well... I mean, it does, right? So, like, if we did not have... I don't like the what-if game. I don't like playing that. Like, what if... But what if we did not have a coffee shop, right? Then we would have a Granite bigger countertops. House. Yeah. Two-car we... garage. Well... A garage <laughs> but not parked in the front you hate houses you don't like houses with cars car garages in the front of them i just don't want to see the garage right whenever i see the house i want to i want to utilize the front door and i want the garage to be to the side i know one of your favorite things what front porches front porches are definitely my jam i love front porches i will forever have a house with a front porch hopefully well we have one now it's not really ours. We rent it, but it's cute. Would it you does call the it job. quaint? So much of our conversations it are about watching Fixer Upper or looking on Pinterest or looking on Zillow and dreaming about a house. Not a grand house, mind you, a humble house, but one not as humble as this one. <laughs> would, would you say? Yeah, a little bit less humble than this one. Um,. This one is, it's sweet, okay? It's very sweet. All I'm saying is that I could make more dinners if I had more room to put the dishes somewhere besides my dryer or my washer. Let me apologize. That is my counter. And I still have not put together the kitchen table. And I the can, last podcast. You said you were going to do it. But you did say you do the clothes last podcast. More clothes have appeared. And more, yeah, something happened. <sighs> But our favorite things, and one of my favorite things that you do, is that salmon with the asparagus, the sauteed onions, and the rice, watching Grey's Anatomy, and just chilling for like two hours at the end of a hard day. That is nice. Drinking lemon water. Ooh, lemon water. And our mix-matched thermos cups that we got from Walmart. They keep the drink extra cold. You know, it's true, which is why at Martin Coffee House, we've ordered those. Mm Mm-hmm. And they'll be available very soon. I'm excited about them. They're going to be so cute. Okay. Um, favorite restaurant ever, ever, ever. What about your favorite restaurant that we have been to together? Okay. One of my favorites is in Paducah. Um, and if it had to be for dinner, it would be Grill 211. That place was amazing. Yes. And the steak was perfect. And oh all the greens. Oh, my gosh. And it the was... service. Spot on. They looked like ventured um cultured pirates who are just ready to like fight somebody over your meal they yeah. just wanted to give the best service and they were like oh you want some some macaroni and cheese with that and they yeah. just brought it out they were incredible i enjoy good service me too i think that's what's lacking a lot like i recently went to somewhere around the general vicinity that was outside of martin put it that way to this beautiful building, absolutely amazing, over a million dollars had been spent on it, Mm -hmm. executed perfectly, great design, Mm -hmm. okay, blah, 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 and had the most, the worst experience of my life, Mm. dealing with service that was subpar, disinterested, did not want to be there, told us that, told us he didn't know how to pronounce anything on the menu, told us that, said that he didn't really want to work much past that night, moved locations, like during the middle of service because the heat was not working and the food came out cold, not at the same time. And they had the most beautiful building, I'm telling you. And it was so such a shame to see that amazing of a space be just demolished, like downgraded by the service of the staff, not caring to be there. Now, I am completely with you on bad service and how that can just ruin an experience. 
But how much of that do you think is because our expectations are so much higher from the atmosphere? I don't... Well, I mean, they built the atmosphere, so why don't they deliver on the service, right? Like, if you're going to go to McDonald's and you're going to sit in there... Actually, a lot of those McDonald's look pretty nice, to be honest with you. Well, you're ruining your point. Well, (laughs) I'm just saying, like, the atmosphere is a part of what you're paying for. 100%, Hundred percent, right? Yeah. So that goes into your experience of the meal, like how everything it really plays into the mindset before you taste something. Mm-hmm. And so much of what you taste is what you think is going to taste like before you taste it. I have indulged in Starbucks for years. Okay, I've had Starbucks cups, and I've been to Starbucks since like I was itty bitty. Every time I went to Jackson to visit you while I lived in Martin, always went to Starbucks with exactly. you. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. The one on Van Drive. Yeah, I love the one on Van Drive. That was your favorite one. That's my favorite one. Okay, and I go to Starbucks, or at least I used to, all the time. Okay? A big thing about that whole environment affects your taste is that everyone thinks, you know, you're in this established environment, this established, super successful coffee chain. And the coffee is going to be as successful of a taste as the company is. But that's just not the case, in my opinion. It's not. Like, that's a fact. It's not just, I mean, that's your opinion, but it's also a fact. I, I just don't want to be like, fact. Starbucks coffee's bad. Well, you because know, think everyone about the concept. likes things. Well, absolutely. And they're a billion freaking dollar company, and they're geniuses, and there's so much to learn. And I'm not bashing it, but it's the concept that you described. It is, you're you're expecting a taste Mm -hmm. automatically built upon the reputation that's there. Right. And you're not judging every single item, every single sip or drink on the quality of what that is. Mm -hmm. You know? People have their blinders on because of the environment that they're in. They freaking just believe it tastes good. Yeah. I remember, and okay, let's apply it to ourselves. Let's Let's get real. Okay. We had 12 reviews... Uh, five star reviews on our coffee shop before we even opened of people commenting on the taste of the coffee before we even opened and I didn't even know these people and they're like super great they're they're not our friends we did have some friends that we had private tastings and they commented but you're not talking about that you're talking about strangers people who wanted to be first okay. people who wanted to be in it's good guys it's amazing it's like, trust me I don't even think we've served that drink yet no, it was it was they were commenting and leaving us reviews on 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 items we didn't even have. Right. And this whole like this whole like culture around being a part of a subgroup, being a part of an elite group, a separatist group that they're in before there's even an in crowd. Sure. Really plays into what Starbucks ex- executes so well. Mm-hmm. That loyalty card that what they call them like rewards the, with well, their stars. We get their stars, but there's there's like a diamond. Isn't there like like a subgroup of like black diamond uh, reward program? Yeah, like they I have know there's like a subgroup cards or something. Like I'm a gold member. I'm it's a, a currency, member. Courtney. It's a currency. It's like your credit card status. No, it is like that. Is why I. I really study them mm-hmm. because that, that, I think, is the biggest success of them. They have efficiently created a culture around it. A and superiority. A superior, man, because it's a status, right? right. Uh, here I am with my $50 mug. I don't want to move. <laughs> I'm so cool, right? And it's so neat to see how people play into that, how it then becomes an association with their identity, right? Mm-hmm. And they define themselves by, there's a great comic. And I don't even know. I've, we watch a lot of comedy on Netflix. I love comedy. Um, we we really love comedy. We went to a great like live show in oh, Paducah. In Paducah. <laughs> that was for our anniversary a couple years ago. That was ago. awesome. That was amazing. That was at um, 1857. No, it was Dry Ground Brewery. We stayed at 1857, um, and then went to Dry Ground Brewery. Yeah. Yeah, and there was stand up comedy, and it was so sweet. Well, I love performance. He was describing. Um, he was describing people in line, saying that they are the drinks that they order. I am tall, skinny, caramel, macchiato. Wait, I am this. Was that the comic or is that from You've Got Mail? No, that is from You Got Mail. <laughs> That's my favorite line from You Got Mail. <laughs> oh, Tom remember Hanks. when he writes and he's like, I am boom, 
Boom, and he's describing yes. these people who Aww. go in. I love th- I love that line Cappuccino. because this is what they have done, and this is what is so beautiful about having product. That's my favorite movie. That's my favorite line in that favorite oh, movie. Oh my goodness! And there's a lot of like, I want it to be you. I always wanted. To- I know, like, I wanted it to be you so badly. It's always like stayed with me watching it, watching that movie with my mom when I was a little kid because obviously, like, that's Your so mom loves many that movie. people's favorite movies. And I thought, what is this? What? It always like stuck with me all these years, and then now it finally made sense because we're in that business, right? Like number one, we're in that business to design marketing and branding plans for other businesses to create that effect, but also for Martin Coffee House, absolutely. I want our product to stand on its own, mm-hmm. and I want the atmosphere and the hype in the in the group that we have created to equal or the quality, but never be greater than the quality of what we have. Yeah, I totally agree. Right? Yeah. But so much of taste in favorite restaurants and all of that plays into that. And I think that for Savannah, Georgia. Oh, oh my, my gosh. Oh my goodness. Right? One of the best times Savannah. I've ever had. Savannah. <laughs> right? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was one of the best. Molasses. Oh God. Just sort of spills I'm, out of your mouth. I'm trying to give you a compliment. Like, I'm sorry. That's one of my favorite times I've ever had with you. I have ever yes. had in my whole entire life, and it was this, just, just. A, how long we were there? Like a week. No, babe. We were there for three days. Okay, well, it seemed like a week, right? The whole trip was longer than that. Ten days. But in Savannah. Everything. There's these hundred year old businesses on every corner. Everything was beautiful. SCAD, which is an art institute, owns over fifty buildings, preserved, historically beautiful. We learned that on the tour. God, I could not get over that. And so much of my experience and the taste was reflected in the quality that we had. Huey's right on the water mm. um this place you just couldn't get into and we got a table right yeah, we did by the window yeah and and we filled out a little survey on yelp and we got that free vignette yeah vignettes vignette oh, i always say that wrong <laughs> i do too <laughs> and it's like man like you're in this atmosphere and it's beautiful and there's people laughing around oh, you that was such a good night it was a beautiful night you know what it also makes me think of though on vice i watch a lot of vice and that guy with the white hair, Uboff, is that his name? Uh, that fake trip advisor? Uber. No, Uber, Uboff, O. Uba. O B. Uba. H U. Number one restaurant in London called The Shed. Remember that? On TripAdvisor. On TripAdvisor. Yes. Faked everything. And people, after he led them all on, wanted to book again. Because why? He had a little DJ playing sounds clinking in the background Mm -hmm. and that experience the hype before they got there made them believe that the store-bought microwaved crap that they were eating it was not microwaved crap it was microwaved lasagna Courtney they were paying for a five-star experience and they were getting microwave lasagna okay I hear you it was crap and they tasted it and they wanted to come back again that's so messed up you can't trust your senses and okay, part well, of me... I trust my senses whenever well, I'm drinking a... Burnt cup of crap from Starbucks. I was going to say a tall Pike's place. <laughs> <laughs> well, these are synonymous. And you know, that's what I'm trying to say. Like, Part of me is just completely interested and like, mind blown and super fascinated with... I say things three times yeah, over. Yeah, you want to get I'm your trying point across. To, I'm trying to get my point across, but I don't have to say it that many times. I'm so fascinated with the psychology behind this. I hear you. And part of me is glad that it's this way. And then the other half is offended that it's this way. Yeah, I can get that. I just, sometimes I'm offended by the big green giant. And other times I'm just proud of them for succeeding. But at the end of the day, like, they did it. They started off in a little... It was not a coffee truck, but it was a coffee sort it's of walk-up stand. And they just kept going. I mean, that's the American dream, you know? I guess. And just because they decided to expand at the rate that they did and make everything 
uber commercial and take the art out of it and even the flavor out of it by over roasting for consistency and giving everything that nice charred taste. Charbucks. Charbucks. Um, I still, I still have to applaud them you, on you a must. daily basis. Like the thing is, is it would be so dumb not to look at them and and learn from them. And I think it's really there's a lot of these coffee shop owners that we've talked to, mm-hmm. insanely insecure. Oh yeah, they they're just like oh I, I never I would and never I, go there I would never go really so you're not going to learn from a billion dollar company that dominates the world that sells more coffee than anyone else have ever even thought of that revolutionized coffee really you're not going to learn anything from them no well good job have one <laughs> shop and go die I don't, whatever <laughs> that's so hard I just I hate it because it's like. No matter where you're at, you have to be able to learn from people. And just because you're jealous of everything that they've accomplished because they've cut corners or took the art out of it doesn't mean that they've not accomplished massive amounts of success. And it does not discredit them. Okay. You know? I agree You must give them that. Yes. Has there ever been an example of your life where you saw someone or, I don't know, something like that where you were unhappy with that person or that service, but you had to give them credit? Yeah, I mean, they're undeniable. That's what I want to be. I want to be undeniable. Well, can you tell me about that situation? Where, what, where I didn't like somebody, but they were super great at what they did? There's so many, like, I don't like most people. (laughs) I really don't, but a lot of people are really great, and I'm like, yeah, man. Go you. I mean, there's a lot of been there's been a lot of coffee shops, other ones not in this area, but I mean around Paducah where um, they've been great and we've gotten into a little back and forth. I'm trying to speak so cryptically about this. I we had a disagreement with the coffee shop owner that lived somewhere away from here and uh, he was very insulting to us. But you know what? I still go to his shop. It's a great he, shop. Because he's he knows what the crap he's doing, man. It's and, great coffee. And I will always emulate anyone who is better than me. Wow, really? Just because someone's being a jackass doesn't mean I'm not going to learn from them. Okay. Yeah, and I'm not going to let that like pride blind me from their brilliance. For, for sure, yeah. Like, why would you ever do that? Some people are sassy, but they're still great. I mean, okay... Did you do anything to get on this person's bad side? Okay, on? well, I'm a prickly person. I I might have done something, but it wasn't completely intentional. Uh-huh. Okay, listen, like I I love competition. Okay, I don't. I just want to play ball, man. Like I just want to have fun and do a little jousting every once in a while, and that is not taken. <laughs> I'm just being honest here, man. I'll I'll just say that you jousted more. You didn't play in the sandbox very well. This was your pre-sandbox days. Yes. And you were a bit aggressive. And this person was like, waha. And And I was like, take over everything. And then it was like, back off. I'm going to learn from you. But then I'm going to double your business. And then it was all, you know, whatever it is. Let's move on. (laughs) You've helped me with this. And I guess to, like, sum it up, you should always learn from people. And... Um, yeah, that's the whole point in, in that little line of thinking there. I don't know. It's just been it's just been fun. And I think what I've loved and what's created more of my favorite things in doing this with you, with a coffee shop, is it's really made us look at service and look at the flavor of food and look at the ingredients. And it's made me enjoy things so much more that when service is executed properly like it was at the grill 211 in paducah oh my goodness it was an elevated experience those mushrooms and i will say that new place that opened up um and that lady was on top chef and it was called the freight house is that yeah the called? freight house yeah um although i did not like most of what was on the menu there the service was executed perfectly and mm-hmm. i enjoyed that and you enjoyed most of your stuff i really enjoyed my food i did not love your um avocado toast avocado salad salad what was that that was so funky <laughs> you're really getting into experimental food and they have like a revolving like menu like oh, it, yeah. it doesn't stay the same my and food was incredible though i don't know what it was i like them they're super great please go there and support that business I mean, they're way better than, I mean, she's on Top Chef. You can't even compare it to anything. I'm not going to, like, don't go there. I'm just saying my experience. Okay, gorgeous restaurant. 
It was, fabulous. Well, I got to say, though, about that, though. I mean, it was a little awkward with the seating. I liked it. It was but, modern farm table. So you're going to drop $140, okay? You're going to sit right next to somebody on a little booth design? I, I don't agree with that. I did not mind the booth design. We could have sat at a table. Uh, no, they seated us there. Like that was, and then they sat a couple right next to us. That's true. Dropping 140, but it is this concept that we saw in Savannah of this yeah. modern dining? Like, yes, it but, is, and it's what they do in the big cities. Like the gray. Like I really wish we would have gone to the gray. We walked right by the gray, and we were like, "Oh, that's I'm cool! So it's a restaurant that's been turned into a Greyhound station," and we had no idea of what majesty was behind those doors. We, we just kept walking because we were. We were overtaken with the city, and we wanted to explore everything, and we weren't hungry, and we walked right past it. Then we watched Netflix in Chef's Table. Oh, my gosh. Chef's Table, right? Yeah. Then it followed this journey of this Savannah, Georgia native. We're going to butcher this story, so we're going to rush through not the details. I don't have to tell the whole story. Good. Incredible, incredible chef. She has the most amazing story of, like, growing up there and moving away at age 11, moving to the big city of New York, taking on a different um, career as, like, a sociologist or a psychologist or a counselor or something like that, and then later getting into um, the food industry and uh, the chef um, profession and then studying food in France and all this stuff and then apprenticing with another chef and then eventually returning to her own hometown of Georgia mm. of Savannah, Georgia and working in uh, this is a black woman and she ended up working in um, a Greyhound bus station which back in the day was like a segregated um, space and so then there she is head chef head owning chef, everything owning everything this powerful amazing black woman just like I am just crushing all the walls and just just rocking it and she has the most amazing food with the most amazing menu and the most inspiring story i've never heard a story so inspiring so in compelling life. so inspiring that's why i'm getting so excited about it right now because it was just the most like fairy tale ending. and we could have had her food yeah we walked, we walked right past freaking it. past it <laughs> I'm just proud that I knew that it was a, like an old Greyhound station. I was like, oh, the Grey, that's cool. Oh, oh man. man. But like so much of my favorite moments in life are around food, or oh, around yeah. the experience that is set, like the table that is set, the experience that is set for us to partake in. And like that's been such a motivator in, in Warren Coffee House mm -hmm. and wanting to provide this moment for people, the opportunity for a moment to happen. That's what we're setting every day. Food of Martin Coffee House is very much more like light lunch, refreshing. Well, Come have lunch with me and let's talk and let's have it's some It's more coffee. brunchy and like it won't be developed, but I don't I don't even want it to be We don't want it to I don't be want it to like be big. I don't want it to be restaurant. I mean, I will never have fryers in there. Never. Like, we'll never I have will not fry. I don't want any like a hood. Like everything's very light. We can do a lot more. We have plans to do a lot more. But a lot of it is sitting around food, these moments that mm. you know, I've shared with you and that I've had through all, all throughout my life. Even today at the hearth when we were there, fabulous place, everyone should go, um, you said this is the food I grew up on. It was. It was like this catfish, it was cornbread, it was rolls, it was white beans, green beans, um, spinach. Like these are things that okra, my God, are like so familiar and nostalgic to me. And then, that, did you have okra on your plate? I didn't get any okra. It was okra. actually shrimp. And I thought it was okra, but it was the little popcorn shrimp, oh, which yeah. I'm not a big fan of. Yeah, I, I really, I was going to say, if there was okra, I missed out. Oh, there was okra, but it was like steamed or boiled or something. Boiled okra. That's a thing. Yeah, I, I know, but I did not grow up on that. I'm a fried okra kind of girl myself. Oh, goodness. All right, moving on. But so many of my memories have been about that, like important really important moments and about the barbecue like i i don't want to paint this awful child labor law picture of me slaving away in the pits as barbecue there is a lot that i loved about that place there there was and one of the biggest things that i kept on seeing was on the fourth of july when people would pick up large quantities of barbecue for their family and they would come in with their family and it was just this 
this ordeal or when we would cook a hog for a community and everyone would be around us and we'd be cooking for people. That's cool. And I did not know, but that was when I fell in love with food service. That was the beginning of the roots of the purpose behind everything. Serving. Serving. And I know now, like, to be honest with you, like, and we probably will never do this. I'm not trying to start another business, okay? I'm not trying We're freestyling. to start another hear business. It. Let's hear it. There is something that has been on my mind for so long about a farm-to-table restaurant, about going through that pain of sourcing everything, bringing true product, executed flawlessly, and served perfectly, and having that experience. Now, it's just because I crave that every single day of my life. And I can go accomplish that in Savannah, Georgia. I can go to Nashville. I can go to places who really care about service that are not just all hype and really care about it and and feel that. I don't know if it's going to be attached to our wedding venue that we do eventually. That's something I really want, the wedding venue. I really want to host. I want to offer a space and we do that now. We do that on a small scale. I mean, a wedding venue is my two favorite things, being a host and being around weddings. We've shot so many, like we've seen so many great, gorgeous weddings. And then we've seen so many weddings that have been executed by trusting people um, that said that they were qualified that really weren't. That's and true. there are so many disappointing wedding planners out there that have no idea what they're doing and they really mislead people. And there's so many photographers and videographers and food vendors and DJs that get into it and this is the biggest freaking day of someone's life and they ruin it because they, they're unorganized and unstructured and it's, a, it's, a mal, it's about disrespecting someone to the degree of saying that you can handle something when you really can't. And I have always been fed up with that and I feel like the reason why we've grown so rapidly in the wedding industry is our commitment to excellence in that and going beyond just shooting a wedding and but talking with the bride and helping plan the timelines. And it's all about control because we want to give more because we want more. You know? Yeah. We're thirsty for more. And and the coffee shop has started this fire that I never thought would I don't know. It's just I wanna give more. I wanna do more. And I want to do more with you, Courtney Sellers. Oh, my goodness. I do. This is so much fun. And I know that we've had a lot of, you know, back and forth with me starting too many businesses at one time. Granted, I agree. Maybe a little too much sometimes. But it's always been around wanting to give more. Would you agree with that? <sighs> I would say that Despite everything, I really, really, really want to have a wedding venue. Someday. Okay, I'll make that happen. Give me three years. Uh, we don't. It's probably gonna take longer. If the my, what I want to do, the vision that I have, is gonna take longer. It's gonna take some money. How much you want? I you want I want some. I want something big, and I want some investors. You want some what? I want something big. Want something big? Yeah. You want investors in it? Yeah. How big are you? Okay, like we might sidebar this. How big are you thinking? What are you? I'm thinking stone. You want a castle? I want a castle. You want me to build a castle for you? Well, I know that you're not physically gonna build it, <laughs> but yeah, I want like an old stables. Tiny... Okay. I mean, what, are, you, are you going more equestrian? I love the equestrian look, but I'm thinking faraway kingdom. You want. To build a kingdom. You want me to build you a kingdom? Imagine the banquet hall with that long table. Okay, I can do that. And the gigantic heart and the gigantic chandelier that hangs above you. Okay. See, are you... Have you been on that, like, Castles of Switzerland? And you've been looking at that? And that, is that what you... I want stone and... Oh, God. I want gigantic pieces of timber framing we can we know a guy that does that part of it and i'm sure i want stained glass stained glass really i think so okay. i want tile this is, okay we're mixing a lot of things here well that's okay i know how to make it work okay i want a sunflower garden in a pond you want a pond give me some mountains you 
Okay. I need a backdrop of mountains. That's my next question. Where is this going to be? South of France. In the mountains. And you went in the mountains? Really? Okay, see, that's interesting. Well, I just came from the mountains. So you can see that there's been a little bit of an influence. I don't know exactly what my plans are for the okay. wedding venue. I just know that I am not willing to settle. Wow, I like that. <laughs> A lot of you guys think that John's the one that's running the show all the time. And the thing is, is that sometimes there's a standard, people. Yeah. And yeah, I will not waver. Okay. I do want to ask you a few questions about this, if you don't mind. Let's talk about my wedding venue. Okay. So, once upon a time, mm -hmm. we had really thought about this. Yes. And we made the decision to go coffee instead of venue. Yes. Okay. Okay. Now, a lot's changed. Yes. What about buying an old factory building? Is this the style? Because we're not doing a barn. Dear God, we're, we're not, not doing, doing a barn. We're not doing a barn. Respectfully. Respectfully. We love barns. We shoot a lot of barns. My sister just looked at a barn this um Sounds great. Really like it. That's this great. Weekend now, for her wedding planning. That's very great. That's very good. So industrial? Like, is it that... Ca okay, that French ch chateau. Yeah. That's it, isn't it? Well, take that. And instead of a French chateau, make the exterior more like stone cottage. Okay. You know those German... Um, yes. The, with the arches and the wood. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. More storybook. I can do that. Mm -hmm. Like... Uh, okay. A hotel inside okay. of it? I think it'd be great to have a lodge. I, I think it'd be really great to have housing, especially with some of the... Um, venues that we looked into this past weekend um i was in chattanooga um at the pink bride wedding show it's a big one with my sister it is a big one they're on tour i think next they're headed to memphis right memphis or nashville we were supposed to hook up with them one time um anyway they're super established they have a publication and a very successful um blog and I saw some really, really great wedding venues that offered on-site lodging for the families. See, I love that. I think, so ideally, so I think these kind of overlap. Yours vision for this venue is a little different than mine, but, and I don't want to talk a lot. I really want to hear what you think about this, honestly. I wanted a couple elements, and I'll, and I'll leave it at that. Mm. 15 rooms, boutique hotel style, okay. maybe, maybe 30. I know it's like double, but maybe 30. 15 on each side um, and then they come to the main hall and to the center okay uh, full service scratch kitchen or like availability to cook everything from scratch that equaled into a bar area that could then be accessible during off season and I mean off season by not on Saturday so it would, it would serve itself and, and could cater out of it separate from that okay kind of like a Pinewood social style of restaurant setup there would be separated from the bar would be a coffee bar and so you have a big functioning kitchen i was feeling like it would be sort of set up like the french chateau that was one unit um that there would be separate lodging for obviously the groom and the bride mm. but it would be inside of the same master building you know it wouldn't be all these separated little Things. You know. I understand. I, I do like the concept of one building. You see what I thought, and then to, I really want to hear what you say. Build the, like, for your first, build the, the auditorium, if you will, like, build the center point, and then as money develops, build the next phase onto it. Well, I'm not going to get into all of that. I, I like the concept of one unit, but there is something very romantic about having your own, like, getaway cabin or, or cottage I wish want to say cabin is going to be a little too smoky mountains for people to envision and as much as I love the smoky mountains that's not the vibe that I'm wanting I don't like the southern charm I don't want to have anything southern I'm, rustic I'm not I'm thinking, against southern rustic I'm not thinking southern rustic I'm honestly thinking like German storybook we should go to Germany then well okay then I think you'd be more influenced by the Swiss out like I think you would be more about Switzerland like around I'm gonna the, be honest I'm not exactly sure the difference in architecture between Switzerland and Germany um, but I do know that most storybooks <laughs> originated the fairy tales from I believe 
the Grimm brothers were German? Oh, I... Oh, brothers Grimm? Well, were they? I think. Let's just go with it. I know that Snow White's in Germany. Were they So we're Dutch? going German. That's a great word It's to in go my down. blood. Oh, I thought... <laughs> yeah, let's talk about German blood. That's... <clears throat> Um, oh my god, guess what? what? We got lost in Chattanooga. What? And we found ourselves on the Volkswagen Drive. Well, okay, the car you factory. You know, I right? told you that Volkswagen moved their new headquarters to, to Chattanooga. Chattanooga. Chattanooga's a hot place right now. And we drove all through it. You drove through the car plant. Yes, and it was like a, it was like a whole community. There's a hospital. There's like all this stuff. They back build there. their own hospital. I don't know if it's their hospital. They probably. I mean, they build their own houses. Like it's a big freaking deal. And okay, we get down there. There's the huge Volkswagen to my right, and then what's to my left, John? Chevy. Amazon. Oh, factory. Yeah. God. There Amazon. was Volkswagen. Then there was Amazon. I turned the corner. FedEx. <laughs> God, you. So you went through an industrial park. Well, yeah, but it was more than that. It was amazing. Yeah, but- Listen, I will build you this venue. No, I don't. I will commit my life. What I'm, I just want to see this. I just, I don't know. Okay, okay. I want this space that can host families and and be this like romantic getaway, important ceremony. It's those moments, space where someone is going to, where a couple is going to commit their lives to each other. It's going to have the best day of their life, the best moments of their life, being in the atmosphere that you created, that is one of the most rewarding things, I, I believe. And and we have caught glimpses of this, Courtney, we with have. our coffee shop. We saw people on dates. We've seen love stories develop in our shop. We've seen people have these beautiful family reunions mm-hmm. and old friends uniting together. Amazing conversations. And like life-changing conversations, like yeah. religious conversations that have led to life of commitment. Yeah. And in this has created a fire in me to want to be in this business. I just want to make magic. Like I think that's the Disney part of me. Okay. Where it's like I just want to make a space that makes people come alive. Okay, we'll do this when we're forty because this I think was We're far from forty people. Seven point two million dollars. Oh my god. That's what I think. This is my estimate. I'm very good with numbers. How are we gonna do that? Well, we're on track actually. Oh, okay. By my current estimate (laughs) we'll just say that we're on track. Sure. We'll just say that we're on track. Well, um, okay. Magic. You want to so, create the magic. I want to create magic. I love that. I want to create this amazing, amazing venue space. And I'm just so inspired from some of these properties that I've seen and some of these properties that I've envisioned because their pamphlets or, or their brochures have one picture and that's it. And I literally Great have design. to use my imagination to come up with the rest. And my imagination is creating some beautiful places. Well, you so, will get let down if you follow people's pamphlet mm-hmm. designs. I'm just saying that this is something that I have almost always wanted. I'm not going to wow. say ever since I was a little More girl. than a coffee shop? Okay, coffee shop came first. And that has been incredibly rewarding and delicious. Yeah. Every day we drink this coffee. Every day we drink this coffee Golly. multiple times a day. That'd be so expensive. Um, but what I'm saying is that since you and I have been together and we've talked about this, I, I've never let it go. And there are so many things I've let go. There are so <laughs> many like dreams we've come up with and I'm like, yeah, no, 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 no. yeah. And this is something that I have never, ever, ever let yeah. my grip off of. I, I really... Uh... I'm attracted to that, Courtney. I, I, I'm really glad. I know. But because, um, yeah, I like that a lot. And I think that I will be able to do that. And, and No, and, we can do well, it. I was about to say that. I didn't say, We're I was a like. team. I was about to say that. Um, but what I'm trying to say is that I'll commit, you know. I'm committing. Like, I will make this, I will make this happen. Are we going to do the same thing? Are we going to. Do this and then not make a, a house for ourselves to no. live in? No. No. Like, I just feel like we're going to see an opportunity. Oh, we're going to find a piece of land. Oh, we're going to come across, like, a, a workable loan or, or something. And it's going to be like, okay, 
now is the time for the wedding venue. And I'm going to be like, yes. And then we're going to be knee deep and we're going to be like, wait a minute. We were going to get a house. I think where we're going to leave this episode at is a precursor to why that's not going to happen. Okay. And we're going to spend all the next episode, okay, talking about the the steps to impact, the steps to creating a better life, the steps of taking care of yourself first, investing in yourself so that you can be filled up to do things later. Very important. The balance between ultimate sacrifice and then also filling yourself back up. Living a work life balance. Okay. And uh but to you know, just to quickly say, no, you will have a house first. We will have a house first and then we will be in that house and then uh and then get the wedding venue. And we're talking about years. And we're talking about years. Um, unless something crazy happens with Fernway. Not, nothing crazy can happen to that level with Martin Coffee House. But Fernway Fox, my God. Fernway Fox has a potential. It has of, no ceiling. It, it, that's a great way of putting it. Even Fox Wedding has a ceiling. Mm-hmm. But Fernway Fox has no limitations. It is purely upon the discipline that the team has. And we would like to thank Fernway Fox once again for sponsoring this episode. Oh. This has been great. I just hope that there was some value for people. What? If there wasn't value, Absolute at least value. you and I got to sit in a room and dream for 30 minutes. Eh, closer to an hour. Look at us. Heck yeah. Thank you guys for listening to this podcast. The next podcast, which we might not do in order, it might not stick to that title, but will most likely be centered around work-life balance. All right. See you in the next one. Bye.